Here are 10 Trump businesses that didn't go quite so well. Number 10, Trump Vodka. What's a better way to drown your Trump sorrows other than drinking Trump's very own Trump Vodka? The first thing that pops into my mind when someone mentions Russia is vodka, and since we all know how Trump feels about Putin, well, it definitely feels right to start off with vodka. Trump, self-confident as always with his ideas, came up with the brilliant thought of producing and selling some of his own branded vodka back in 2005. The brand was launched with the slogan, Success Distilled, which actually is a pretty decent slogan. Trump was so confident about the success of his new vodka, he was predicting that Trump vodka would outsell Grey Goose. Not atypical of President Trump, he was also predicting that Trump and tonic would become the most consumed cocktail in the US. Trump's even signed a deal with the Russians so he could export 50,000 cases of his vodka to Russia. Maybe this is the Russia ties that they're looking for. The best part about Trump vodka is the fact that Trump doesn't even drink vodka himself. In fact, he doesn't even drink at all. However, Trump and his vodka selling dreams were soon shattered in 2011 after the sales numbers couldn't keep up with the fixed and variable costs of producing the vodka. However, if you're trying to make your bar great again, you can actually still buy empty bottles of Trump vodka on eBay for around 70 to 80 bucks a bottle. Whoever bought Trump vodka and threw it away. Come on, couldn't you guys predict the future? However, if you actually want the real deal Trump vodka, apparently, due to its popularity, this thing is still selling in Israel. It looks like people there enjoy their fair share of Trump and tonic to survive family reunions during Passover. However, since both Trump and family reunions can be pretty interesting at times, who am I to judge? Samiak Trump Pesach to you guys. Number nine, Trump University. Ah, good old Trump University. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this one. Trump actually said, quote, if I had a choice of making lots of money or imparting lots of knowledge, I think I'd be as happy to impart knowledge as to make money. Well, true or not, Trump established this for-profit institution anyways. However, the organization wasn't an accredited university or college. It didn't give college credit, grant degrees, or grade its students. It did, however, offer courses in real estate, asset management, entrepreneurship, and wealth creation. But let's be for real. Who were the people attending just to list Trump University on their resume? More than 7,000 people actually attended Trump University. The focus of the instruction was real estate investing, with Trump claiming in advertisements, quote, I can turn anyone into a successful real estate investor, including you. Typically, the instruction began with an introductory seminar. At the introductory seminar, students were urged to sign up for additional classes. Approximately 6,000 people signed up for a $1,500 three-day course, and 1,000 people were upsold to silver, gold, or elite mentored courses, ranging in prices from $10,000 to $35,000. 35,000, just why? However, Trump's institution closed down in 2010 after several lawsuits alleged fraud. There was also an investigation a few years later by the New York Attorney General. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the details because it's really not that interesting of a he said, she said. Trump settled the lawsuits in November 2016 after he was elected president and paid $25 million for three lawsuits, claiming that the only bad thing about winning the presidency was that he didn't have the time to go through a long but winning trial on Trump University. Number eight, Trump the game. Is there a better way to market yourself as balling out of control than to try to make yourself the Monopoly man, AKA rich uncle Pennybags? I don't think so. Trump's Monopoly-style board game first launched in 1989, and it was patterned after Monopoly and based on Trump's career in his 1987 book, The Art of the Deal. Trump, who received input in developing the game with Milton Bradley Game Specialist, said that he didn't want a game based solely on chance. He wanted a game based on talent, and that he wanted to teach people to see if they have business instincts. Trump and Milton Bradley were aiming to sell at least 2 million copies but the game failed to meet its target and sold 800,000 copies. 
Supposedly, the game is pretty cutthroat, and a senior VP at Milton Bradley said that the game wasn't exactly the type of game you'd pull out when grandma came over. Trump even admitted that perhaps the game is too complicated. Parker Brothers, and not the original maker of the game Milton Bradley, actually decided to relaunch the game again after Trump's success with The Apprentice in 2004. They tried simplifying the rules and adding some You're Fired cards, and guess what? The tagline for the revamped game was, It takes brains to make millions, it takes Trump to make billions. This guy! Number 7. Go Trump! Launched in 2006, this site was supposed to find you great deals on plane tickets and hotels. Something that'd be Trump approved because he, quote, puts his name only on the best. The site's tagline was, The Art of the Travel Deal, a reference to Trump's autobiography. His site had the standard deals that you could have found on other travel sites, but the feature with GoTrump.com was Trump's personal picks of resorts and hotels that he liked to go to. Wow, guess what? Not many people found those places affordable. After the launch of the company, the Washington Post quoted Harry Hardevelt of Forrester Research as calling it a vanity site for Trump. He went on to predict that the site wouldn't make much money. Well, he definitely nailed that prediction right on the head because unfortunately for Trump, this short-lived travel site only lasted until 2007. Conveniently enough, the site GoTrump.com will now redirect you to his official presidential campaign page. So, no worries, you'll still get the chance to type in GoTrump.com anytime you want and still see Trump's face. Number 6. Trump Beverages Trump getting into the water business actually makes a lot more sense than Trump producing Trump Vodka because this is something he could actually drink. Trump launched Trump Ice, which was initially sold in national grocery chains at, at specialty food stores throughout the U.S. Now, Trump Ice is only exclusively available at Trump-branded hotels, restaurants, and golf clubs. According to Trump's 2016 financial disclosure form, which was filed with the Federal Elections Commission, his personal earnings from Trump Ice in the previous year amounted to $413,339. Not too shabby for the water bottles with Trump's picture on it, given that Trump Ice is now only distributed on his own property. Trump also tried starting off the production of Trump Fire and Trump Power, which were supposed to be some carbonated drinks with, of course, his picture on the bottles. The whole idea was abandoned sometime between 2006 and 2007. Anyone actually had Trump Ice before? Let us know in the comments section. Number five, Trump Magazine. What's the best product to launch in the middle of a huge recession in the U.S.? A magazine about luxury properties, yachts, and cars. Okay, okay, maybe it wasn't the very beginning of the magazine. Always with the perfect timing, Trump decided to relaunch his Trump magazine in 2006. The Trump magazine was first released as Trump Style back in February 1997. The magazine had a circulation of 130,000 and was available for free to VIP guests who stayed at Trump's hotel casino properties in Atlantic City, New Jersey. In 2002, Trump's style became Trump World, though it barely only had a few publications. A total of 50,000 copies would be offered to guests for free at Trump's country clubs, condominium properties, and hotel casinos, while another 50,000 were basically mailed to the 1%. I guess getting Trump World in the mail meant you were ballin'. Trump World would cease publication in May 2003 because of a dispute in distribution. Trump World then launched again in September 2004. As of December 2005, the magazine had lost more than $3 million and was largely considered to be a failure. However, as part of a licensing agreement, Trump earned $120,000 for each issue published that year. Beginning in 2006, Trump received a royalty fee of $135,000 for each issue and was to continue receiving royalty fees through 2009 as long as the magazine continued printing. In 2006, Trump decided that rebranding and renaming Trump World into Trump Magazine would help. The magazine began marketing towards men and began to focus on Trump's lifestyle and personality. Apparently, the changes were successful, with the spring issue earning approximately $250,000. Trump's daughter Ivanka appeared on the summer 2006 cover of the revamped magazine to help attract male readers. Eventually, the magazine stopped its publication because of low advertising sales. The recession will do that. Number 4. Trump Stakes 
I mean, if you can sell water with your name, f it, why not steaks? Trump Steaks launched in 2007 and offered packages of, well, obviously steaks, for the not very affordable prices that ranged anywhere from $199 and $999. The steaks were USDA Angus certified and were supplied by Buckhead Beef. When it first started, it was selling through the Sharper Image and QVC, though the Sharper Image only carried the steaks for roughly two months. According to the company's then-CEO, Jerry W. Levin, the product was largely unsuccessful. Levin had claimed that Sharper Image, quote, literally almost sold no steaks, and that advertisements featuring Trump's photo did attract customers to buy products at the store. If you're a huge Trump fan and you really want to try the steaks, all you got to do is visit one of his properties and order one there. Of course, for the most loyal of fans out there, the only way you can eat it is well done and with ketchup. Come on, Trump. What the f***? Number three, Trump Airlines. Trying to reinvent flying in the late 80s, Trump decided to put his hands down and get a $245 million loan to start his own Trump Airlines. He bought the Eastern Airlines shuttle and their Boeings. The company was quite successful because it was offering flights all around the East Coast, and one of the best parts about it was that you didn't need any beforehand reservations or anything. You just pop on the airport, hop on the plane, and fly out. Something like a plane-bus combo. Trump pushed to make the new shuttle a luxury service and a marketing vehicle for the Trump name. He had the interiors redecorated with such features as maple wood veneer, chrome seat belt latches, and gold-colored bathroom fixtures. Trying to change a successful business is basically a pretty dumb move on Trump's part. The shuttle's core passengers chose it for its convenience, not its costly luxury features. And hence, Trump's shuttle never turned a profit. In September 1990, the business loans went into default and ownership of the airline passed to its creditor banks, led by Citicorp. And that was the end of Trump's fun in the airline business. Number two, smells by Trump. What do real men like Trump smell like? That's a no-brainer. Come on, they smell like success, of course. Actually, I'm talking about Trump's signature cologne line, success. Surprisingly enough, the packaging isn't really tacky and it doesn't have his picture on it. That's odd, wouldn't you say? Wait, are we sure Trump dropped this line of cologne? Well, don't worry, his other fragrance line, Empire, is adorned with what you'd expect from Trump. Black and gold coloring. Before you think, ah, good, at least he didn't name it after himself, let me tell you about his third fragrance line. Nestled between his other fine line of fragrances, Donald Trump, the fragrance. Finally has what you're looking for. This line has his name on it, comes with gold almost everywhere, but unfortunately, no picture again. I'm pretty sure that didn't deter loyal customers from buying it. Success was sold at Macy's, and there were multiple occasions when the public asked for the line to be dropped. No action was taken until 2016. Macy's only discontinued its collaboration with Trump after he came out in the public with the comments about illegal Mexican immigrants. Apparently, since he got elected as the president of the USA, all of his fragrance lines are in the process of being discontinued. Too bad, because I bet foreign diplomats would have absolutely loved receiving sets of Trump fragrances. Number one, Trump model management. Since we all know where Trump likes to grab pretty ladies, but hold up, only if they let him, it's no wonder one of his favorite business of all times, his modeling agency, isn't a huge success. Currently, the business is rated quite poorly on Google and faces the possibility of a couple of lawsuits even after shutting down in 2017. First Lady Melania Trump was represented by Trump Model Management before marrying Trump. In August 2016, Former models alleged that the agency hadn't obtained proper working visas for them while they were working. One of the models even said that she worked illegally for four whole years. However, rumor has it that ever since those allegations spread through the public, models had become reluctant to sign deals with the agency and clients started preferring other agencies. On top of that, some of his best agents left and either started their own business or moved on to work for the competition. In April 2017, it was announced that the agency would be closing, though it wasn't clearly stated why. Hey, you win some, and you lose some.
Here's what's next. President Trump has promised that Mexico will pay for the wall. His plan is to tell Mexico to pay for the wall, and if they don't, he's going to put a tax on money that Mexican workers in the U.S. send back to their families in Mexico. Or he's going to raise tariffs on goods coming from Mexico into the United States. He says that the U.S. import...